So now we're looking at an anterior view of a left hip and thigh region. We want to look at the muscles of the thigh this time. So we'll start with the quadriceps muscle group. There's four of them. So we've got first, front and centre, rectus femoris. Now the rectus femoris uh, has its proximal attachment at the anterior inferior iliac spine. So we can see here the anterior superior iliac spine quite clearly. And a couple of muscles that have just been removed are attaching there. Once they're out of the way, we can see the rectus femoris here attaching into the AIIS. We can see that it has that bipennate shape with muscle fibers running in two different directions there. Now its distal attachment is into the base of the patella and then from there via the patella ligament down to the tibial tuberosity. And it shares that distal attachment uh, with all of the other quadricep muscles. They all attach distally there. But the other three attach proximally to the femur, not to the hip at the AIIS. So if we um, re well we'll remove rectus femoris, we can have a look. The other three, the other three muscles of the quadriceps group are all called vastus, just meaning that they're big, vast as in big. So here's the medial one, vastus medialis, on the medial side of the, of the thigh there. This one here is vastus lateralis on the lateral side. And just be careful with vastus lateralis because it's quite a big muscle. Well, they're all quite big. But this is it here. This is the iliotibial band or tract running over it. But this is still vastus lateralis here. It goes all the way under that tract and comes around to, to being able to be seen from a posterior point of view. So this is all vastus lateralis under, under this connective tissue. Okay, then we've got in between them vastus intermedius. We can see the muscle fibres up here proximally and tendinous material here more distally. So in between the other two, vastus intermedius. So medialis, lateralis, intermedius. So those are the four quadricep muscles. And then we have a group known as the adductors. Now, on this model, we can see all five, but there's one of them that we can only just see. So if we start here at the pubis on the medial aspect of the hip there, the first muscle we come to here is pectineus. So pectineus is a short muscle coming from the pubis out to the proximal femur on an angle. So the fibres very much ob oblique there. So that's pectineus. Now then there's a little window here that you can see is a little bit darker there, hopefully on the screen. It's not labelled on this model. You can only see a tiny bit of it. That's adductor brevis. So we can see a little bit of adductor brevis there. It's actually posterior to this larger muscle, adductor longus. Now that one's pretty clearly visible. And it's the most commonly strained muscle here in the adductor region. So if someone has a groin strain, it's probably adductor longus, and it's probably just here at the tendon. So pectineus, adductor brevis, adductor longus. And then from an anterior point of view, we can just see a bit of adductor magnus here, which is the largest of the adductors. So there's magnus. So we've got pectineus, brevis, longus, magnus, and then medially gracilis. Now, gracilis is a long, slender muscle. Uh, it's probably going to be skinnier uh, on the specimens than it is here. It has a long, skinny tendon distally attaching into the proximal tibia. And it runs down the medial aspect of the thigh, right where the seam of your genes would be. So that's gracilis there. Now, if we keep... Oh, now we're looking at a medial point of view. From a medial point of view, we can see more of a ductum magnus posterior to gracilis here. So this is all still magnus. And then if we turn the specimen over to look from a posterior point of view, and then we actually remove the hamstrings, what we can see is this is all magnus. So this is magnus here, under this deep to the sciatic nerve here, deep to the hamstrings travels all the way down to the distal femur, doesn't 
attached to the tibia, like the gracilis, but does make it all the way down to the distal femur, and it's large. So from a posterior point of view, if the hamstrings are out of the way, you can see how big Magnus is. This bit up here is also Magnus, uh, and so it runs right up to the quadratus femoris here. Okay, so all of this is Magnus. Then this muscle that we're looking at here is vastus lateralis. So it's come all the way around to kind of join up to attach very close to where Magnus attaches to on the, prox on the posterior aspect of the femur. So that's what we've got there with the adductors. So five muscles. We can't see too much of adductor brevis on this model in between the pectineus and longus but on the specimens what you will be able to do is move longus anteriorly a little bit and find brevis deep behind longus there it's only fairly thin but i think on all the specimens that we have you can actually manage to do that you can actually find it now then that means we've come all the way around to the posterior aspect and so we're ready to have a look at the hamstrings just as soon as I can put them back on. So what we've got are three muscles in the posterior aspect of the thigh. There are two that are medial and one that is lateral. So the two that are medial are semitendinosus and semimembranosus and you can see them both here. They're put together as one piece on the model. Just ha come a little bit closer so hopefully we can see where they are, uh, where they can be seen to be different. So remember, tendinosis is the more superficial one. If you're looking at from a posterior point of view, that's the one you're going to see more easily. Membranosis is deep to it. Now, especially distally here in the thigh, membranosis is much, much broader than tendinosis, which is quite narrow. So we can see semimembranosis either side of tendinosis, which is here centrally. Now, there's a dividing line there that's separating the two muscles. So, membranosis, tendinosis. Now, tendinosis on a lot of the specimens by this point will just be a long, skinny tendon already, not quite as broad as it is on the model here on the specimens. But we can see membranosis here medially and laterally. Now, proximally, semimembranosis will have a broad, flat, membranous tendon. But you need to lift semitendinosus out of the way to be able to find that. On the model, we can't do that. But on the specimens, that should be fairly easy. So that's the two medial hamstrings. The lateral one is biceps femoris. Now, all three of them attach proximally to the issue of tuberosity. But the biceps femoris has two heads. Now, you don't need to be able to identify them separately. You don't need to write down which head is which, but you do need to know that they're both part of biceps femoris. So here's the long head, and it's by far the longer head. It's much, much longer than the short head, which is this smaller part here. Now both of them attach distally to the head of the fibula, but only the long head is attached proximally, sorry, at the issue of tuberosity. Whereas the short head is attaching to the linear aspera proximally. So there's the short head there. Notice when we take the long head off, the short head stays on the model. So here we've got adductor magnus, short head of biceps femoris, and then vastus lateralis here. And then we can replace the long head biceps femoris there.